Come on, Bamba Beer! Well, at this altitude, you can really feel the difference. Wow, I'm so out of breath. We're both pretty affected by the altitude, I reckon. Hi, I'm Lavi. And I'm Ollie. And this is our hero, Bamba Beer. Together, we are attempting a Guinness World Record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by, by motorcycle. motorcycle. Join us for season three here in South America. Morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 299 on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. Good morning, Bumblebee. The sun is just rising here in the Atacama Desert in Chile. And we camped last night at the end of this little dirt track next to this river. Have a look around. Behind us, we can see the Atacama Salt Flats. It's an absolutely spectacular view for the morning. But we have an exciting day ahead, so let me show you guys where we're heading today. So today, we are gonna be heading further down into the Reserve Nacional Los Flamencos to check out some lakes around here, some lakes around here, some beautiful mountains before heading back up to this area just south of San Pedro de Atacama. Yes, today is Salt Lakes Day. Yes, and if we are really lucky, then we can see flamencos and maybe we might even swim in the Salt Lake. So that would be so cool. It's really funny because we have uh, donkeys here as our neighbors. We could hear them in the night like In German we say ea, ea. <laughs> you do an amazing donkey impression. Thank you. So, but anyway, we still have to pick up everything and it's already eight o'clock, so better hit the road, let's go. Have a look down here. This beautiful river oasis right next to where we camped last night. Look at that, so green here. And then look right next to us. It's just sand, it's crazy. And man, you can feel the altitude up here. I think we're something like 3,000 meters above sea level up on the Altiplano and we are all packed up and ready to go. It's a beautiful but a little bit of a crazy little dirt track with a little bit of sand. The right thing to wake up in the morning, hey? Exactly, nothing like a beautiful challenge in the morning. <laughs> bye bye beautiful camp. I had such a peaceful night. I slept really well. Yeah, apart from the odd sound of donkeys in the night, it was <laughs> totally silent, no one around. Yeah, it was a beautiful spot. Ooh, that little was... Bit of, <laughs> a little bit of sand sliding. So we're making our way first over to a town called Soquer, and there we have to check in because we actually reserved and bought our tickets online. Yeah, the tickets were per person 15 pounds. But they give you entry to multiple areas and sites of this national reserve because pretty much everything you can see here is part of the Los Flamencos National Reserve. And so today we're starting off by going to the lagoon sector and there we should be able to see some flamingos. Yes! <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. Ooh. Okay. So have to be really careful here because it's a bit of rubbish around, maybe some nails, maybe some glass. We don't want to <laughs> flat our brand new Atlas Capra X tires, that's for sure. There's not many places to find a replacement out here. Beautiful, <laughs> look at this. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Oh, hold on, bit of sand. Ooh. Slow down for the sand. There we go, back on the main road. Awesome. Wow, what a location, hey? You can really see the volcanoes now in the background here. And they are just massive. And then on the right, the big salt flats of the Atacama. It's just a stunning area. Absolutely stunning. Guys, look, 
We just reached the Tropic of Capricorn! Woohoo! Wow! Cool! Ruta del Desierto Tropico del Capricorno. Nice. nice! That's so cool because this reminds me when we reached the Tropic of Cancer in the Sahara. We reached the Tropic of Cancer! Woo! Nice! And now we've reached the Tropic of Capricorn. <laughs> Is that a milestone or what? And thanks to Nikos, we have a sticker to put on it. <laughs> Lavi and Ollie, they're forever on the Tropic of Capricorn. Awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Beautiful, check-in complete. And now we are on our way to the first lagoons. So the first place we're going is called Salar de Aguas Calientes. So that's like, I think the salty hot water, I think. <laughs> so the whole of the Los Flamencos National Reserve covers an area of 740 square kilometers. And the reserve actually goes up to an elevation of 4,800 meters. Which is absolutely crazy. So we have about an hour ride now to reach our first stop and as you can see around us it looks already epic so it's gonna be a quite nice ride. First Chilean guanacos. <laughs> Hello guys. Beautiful. Oh, the whole family. Yeah. Well, they might be vicunas. I don't really know the difference between a vicuna and a guanaco, so we'll call them vicuanacos. <laughs> and it's freezing up here, hey. It's like 13 degrees. Yeah, I'm really cold too. Yeah, and you can really feel the difference in the power of bumblebee. Like a bit sluggish. So we are really, really high up now. I don't know how high up, but we are really high. Well, here we go. We're coming down into the Agua Caliente salt flats. Look at that view, hey? Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it really feels like we are in a plane just landing on another planet, hey? Oh my God. <laughs> Wow. I think that's a Gonico on the salt flats. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's funny. He's like, where's the grass? <laughs> the agua is caliente, aquí. No, name. Oh, just the name. The name. Aguas caliente es eh, donde nace el agua. Donde sale energía de, uh, de col, de water fría. Ah, ok. ¿Por qué uh, de agua caliente? De volcanos. Ah, de volcanos. Contextos de volcanos. Volcano miniques. Miniques. Wow, crazy. The staff at the center here just told us that we are sitting at 4,100 meters above sea level here. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, crazy. No wonder I, we felt a little bit out of breath. Man, yeah. 4,100 meters. Yeah, it really takes your breath away. <gasps> takes my oh. breath away. <laughs> yeah, but this is um, actually the highest we have ever been in our entire lives. Not in a plane, of course. And uh, she was also telling us that the volcano Miniquez, which is this one right behind us, is 5,900 meters tall. Wow. Mm -hmm. 5,900 meters above sea level. Yeah, when I said we're really high up, we're really high up here. Whoa, look down there. Oh, 
and we can actually smell the volcanic sulfur gases coming off of the water. So these are not lagoons that we can swim in, unfortunately. Wow. All right, time to dive off into the pool. <laughs> you have your swimming shorts underneath, eh? Look at this. Awesome, look at this. Got these crazy red rocks just over this like green blue lake with this yellow shore. I mean, it's just a multicolor volcanic paradise here. Wow. Wow, I'm so out of breath. Oh my God, really, I never had this experience. I feel like a little bit dizzy, a little bit like that I can't walk very fast. I think it's like the feeling when you have just completed a marathon or something like this, you know? <laughs> so we're on our way back to Bumblebee and I'm really hot now. <laughs> Me too. Oh man. It's just a little bit of elevation here. We're climbing a little bit up and we're getting hot instantly. Hot and exhausted. Oh. I think this trail is only like a one kilometer trail, but man, it's taking it out of us, yeah. especially with our motorbike trousers and boots on, man. Yes, I can see Bumblebee. <laughs> our walking for the day is over. We're not that fit anymore. No, That's no. for sure. If you have a bike to ride to everywhere, it's like, yeah, that's the dream. It makes life a bit too easy, perhaps, <laughs> but anyway. All right, I think it's time for lunch then, eh? Yes, Bumblebee. Just where we left her. Got some egg and onion sandwiches and some more goat's cheese, of course. At least I've got to get through that. And some boiled potatoes with mayonnaise. <laughs> Actually, apparently you're not supposed to eat in this park, but we asked over here and they said that it was okay for us to eat next to the bike. So we'll just quickly uh, have a sandwich and get on our way. <laughs> Amazing view of Volcano Meniscus here. Look at this. We're like right up at the front of it. And that is like nearly 6,000 meters high. We're now heading to our second destination of the day, Laguna Menique and Laguna Meniques. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Something with M. <laughs> <laughs> and for that, we have to head now on this dirt track up into the mountains in front. It looks like a really epic road to get up there. Wow, this is epic here. Yeah, very cool landscape. Yeah, we've never ridden through anything like this. Look at these rocks. These piles of rocks everywhere. Yeah. And this like winding sandy track. Well, we're coming up now, getting some views, but this road is a little tricky, I must admit. It's not the easiest. Oh. No, and with the high altitude as well, man, it's making me a little bit exhausted. Ah. Oh. Whoa. Power! <laughs> Come on, Bumblebee! Well, at this altitude, you can really feel the difference. Ah, here we go. Sector Miscanti Meniques, Reserva Nacional Los Flamencos. Nice. Hola, buenas. Hola. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bien. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, no, Inglaterra. Inglaterra. Uh, ¿Su nombre? Hector. 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 Mucho gusto, Hector. Yeah. <laughs> Mucho gusto. Bienvenido a tu lugar. <laughs> Gracias. Gracias. Well, coming up over Laguna Miscante. Whoa. It's 
a massive lagoon, wow! Yeah, beautiful! So actually I read into about the formation of le these lagoons Okay And um, apparently originally it was like a collection of rivers that were heading from the big volcanoes and mountains here down, basically down to where we came from But then apparently there was a massive volcanic eruption and that created a big dam basically but effectively this volcanic eruption pushed up this side creating a huge dam and that allowed these lakes to form cool unbelievable very cool whoa here we go here's the second lagoon laguna miniquez beautiful oh yeah look at that absolutely beautiful you can see down there the fake one of course <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> my kin is down there and you can see a few birds along here according to the sign those are tagua cornudas but uh no flamingos here hey <sighs> no we've spent two days in the los flamencos national reserve and we haven't found any flamingos yet really sad <laughs> but it's absolutely spectacular landscape here i mean wow yeah Hello little guys Oh my god, look at these guys Whoa Oh, they're chasing each other Crazy guys Bit of a Vicuna argument there Alright, on our way back down again from the awesome lagoon landscape and we'll now be making our way back to the town Soquer or I think actually one of the people we met told us it was pronounced Sokairi yeah because it's a little bit difficult to visit the places around this area here apparently everything is online now and you have to sort of book your slot when you want to go and visit a place you can't really just rock up and say oh i want to see this place now they really insist of you booking your slot in now we will go back to this town and then we do a little bit of more research and see what we still uh, will be able to see for today and for tomorrow yeah because we're planning on spending one more day inside this big reserve area because there are still quite a few more awesome things to see including a crazy geyser field which we are definitely going to tomorrow oh yeah yeah that's that's a must see a must see i'm so excited but yeah let's see uh what we can reserve tickets online for and let's see how much time we have and what we can see just stopping for a rest in uh, Socaire we're both pretty affected by the altitude I reckon um, we've both got a big headache and uh, feeling pretty tired actually yeah and it's just half day actually <laughs> I'm ready for bed <laughs> yeah and we didn't like exert a whole huge amount of energy you know we, we just did like a one kilometer walk and then we were just riding around on the bike so yeah. i think we are not acclimatized basically to this altitude to yeah. like 4000 4000 plus meters yeah. and uh yeah it's affecting us a little bit uh-huh yeah i can definitely feel it okay so after a bit more research uh, we found that our next destination, which was a place called Laguna Sejar, which is a lagoon that you can actually swim in, is actually closed to the public from 1 p.m. onwards every day. But luckily we could book ourselves in for tomorrow, 9 o'clock. <laughs> yes, <Morning> swim <laughs> in the Salt Lake, in the Atacama Desert. Uh. Yeah, so that place being closed, combined with the fact that we both have banging headaches at the moment, means that we are just gonna head for a camp right now and have a chance to rest and recover and hopefully acclimatize a little bit so we found one place on Ioverlander which is not too far away from here and it's pretty close to this lagoon that we're heading to tomorrow morning so we just got to ride over there and see if it's all right to camp Right, 
This is our turn off towards our wild camp. <laughs> wow, you know, for an unpaved road, I mean, this is a spectacular unpaved road. Look at this. It's better than tarmac. <laughs> it's better than some tarmac roads we've been on, that's for sure. <laughs> it's really funny because this spot on iOverlander is called Lonely Tree. <laughs> so basically we're looking out for a very lonely tree to camp under and we can give them some company for the night. So I think that is our lonely tree over there but it doesn't actually look that lonely there's quite a few trees around it. Yeah I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Since we have to come off somewhere here to get to it maybe it's ah I think the road's here. Oh okay. Oh look, there's a couple of people here. Yeah. Hola, buenas. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just find our spot then, shall we? These guys are here. Yeah, let's park just pa park just here. Yeah. Hola, buenas. <laughs> oh, that's a bit deep sand there. That bike leant over a lot. Luckily, we've got our Givy extra wide sand plate, which just about saves us from into the sand. Good evening guys, we made it! Happy and alive! Happy and alive with a bit of a headache and feeling a little bit worse for wear. But we made it to this beautiful camping spot. Have a look at this. Bumblebee, tent and desert. Just endless desert. And the sun is setting behind the trees on this side. It's pretty windy but the trees are giving us some shelter. There's quite a few little cluster of trees and bushes. And so you've got to try and position yourself in the right place so that you don't get all of the wind. <sighs> Hope for the best. Hope for the best. And we have a big decision to make tonight as well because there are basically two ways to get to Bolivia from here. The first is called Salar Olagüe Pass and that is to the north but it's on an unpaved road and we really don't know the condition of this road but it is more direct to head to where we're trying to head to the other way to get there is crossing over Paso Yama over to Argentina and then crossing from Argentina up to Bolivia it is a longer way but the entire way is paved so People have told us very, very, very lovely things about this pass. It's one of the highest passes of the Andes and they say that the north of Argentina is absolutely spectacular as well. So there's amazing draws to both. Yes. <laughs> and we really don't know what to do at the moment. So we're going to have to have dinner and have a think about it. So that's it from us today. At the end we did 166 miles and we hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below. And if you really, 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 really like our videos, then you can support us on Patreon. You find the link in the description below and we will see you next time.